Hi, this is Nancy Rolfsma with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. And as promised, last week we had done the quilting on this quilt. So we did some loop-de-loos and around the triangles and stuff. So if you're interested in how I quilted this quilt, you can always jump back to last week. There's a live video there. It's only, I don't know, about 20 minutes long or something. Um, but then I mentioned that this week we would put on the label and the binding. So I just want to take you through some simple steps on how I do that. All right. So starting with, this is the label. So this is for my new nephew, Nolan, um, who is into robots. And it starts as a large square. So you might have noticed when I made this label, I did it using my scanning, brother scan and cup machine and the fabric quill pens from We Are Memory Keepers. We did a video on that too. It was, oh, I'm thinking it might have been four weeks ago because it was before the whole series of mask videos that we did. So what you might notice is that there's some miscellaneous seams on this. What it's supposed to be is one large square, but I was not paying attention to the diagonal of what I had written on it. And so I had cut it out wonky. And so I ended up having to add seams to it. So please ignore the seams. This should just be one large square, whatever size you want it to be. If you're planning a very elaborate label, you might want to leave more space. If you're planning just to put your city and <coughs> excuse me, the city and the um, day that you finished it, that kind of stuff, it can be a smaller square. So the idea is you take that square and then you're going to press it in half. So now it is a triangle, all right? Now we're gonna set it onto our quilt. So on the quilt, in the process of doing the quilting on the quilt, this line of stitching right here at the edge is always my first line of stitching. That tells me that's gonna keep the border in place when I'm actually quilting the border. So that line of stitching is what I use for the placement of my label. So when we look at the back of the quilt, we can see here is this, that stitching. I know that that stitching is approximately a quarter of an inch in from the edge of the quilt. And that's where I'm going to place the label. So I want to take my, I'm using my Roxanne's glue base stitch. So this is a liquid glue, comes in a lot of different sizes now. Um, by far my all-time favorite liquid glue. It's a temporary bond, but it's very, very strong. And it's um, acid-free and does not hurt quilts. I'm going to take on the back of that label that I made, and I'm going to put some dots of the glue. Not too much, not too little. There's a little rhyme out there about how many dots to put and too much or too little and I can't remember what it is. So using my dots and then along this edge. Now the reason I like this label, not only does it look cool on the quilt, but it also makes it very difficult for somebody to take the label off. So that years from now, this label, even if Nolan uses this quilt just, you know, constantly and his mom has to wash it constantly it's not going to fall off and let's say it's a fancy quilt a quilt an art quilt maybe and you are afraid that quilt might be stolen if you put a label on like this if the thief which sounds awful that somebody would steal a quilt but it does happen the thief would literally have to take the entire binding on that corner anyway off the quilt unstitch it it would not be an easy process if they cut it out is it possible well of course it is thieves are usually pretty smart sadly and it could definitely happen but this is just a very very secure label so now it is in place all right and look at how totally cute that is now i'm going to put the bore binding on so i usually like to start if this is here then i'm going to start my binding maybe about a foot or so away from it on the front hand side. This is where I'm going to start putting my binding down and I have pre-prepared my binding but I left enough here for you to see how I actually do it. So I put um, I think six strips together. I cut my strips two and a quarter inches. That is the size that I like for a normal bed quilt. If I'm doing a smaller bed quilt or a smaller wall quilt, I might even cut it thinner. On the back side, 
of one of the um, ends of the strips, I'm going to take and fold that down at a 45 degree angle and then cut it off with about a half inch remaining. So that's my cut. Now I'm going to take and press the entire strip in half. So you can see here, that's what the beginning section looks like, where it's folded down at a 45 degree angle. The seams that I sewed together, this was sewn together on the diagonal. So my first strip was laying down right sides up. My second strip was laid right side down, crisscrossing each other. And I sew the seam right along that diagonal. Now I can take my scissors, trim that again to about a half inch seam allowance, a little bigger than maybe what you would think. I'm gonna press that seam open. So in pressing that seam open, I'm eliminating bulk. If I make that seam straight and I press it just to one side, you will end up with about 16 layers of fabric when this folds over but I press that seam open, it's on the diagonal. So now when I continue to press that in half, the bulk of that binding is spread out the entire distance or the entire thickness of that diagonal seam. So there's no place that there's more except for right here that there's more than just the um, three layers of fabric, I guess, right there. All right, so my binding is all prepared. I'm gonna take my clips out. Oops, cat hair on it. It's my house, that's what happens. I'm gonna take it and this is gonna be the beginning portion of my binding. So I'm gonna, all right, Athena, hold on a second. I'm gonna move this iron, get it out of the way. All right, so we're gonna start the binding here. I like to keep my batting and backing on the quilt when I'm doing my binding, so it gives me something to hold on to. This is my beginning where I had done that fold down and cut that off. I'm gonna place that, oh, I don't know, about 18 inches from the corner and pin it in place. But I'm gonna start sewing here, about six inches away from there and I'm just going to pin it in place so that it stays where I want it when we go to the ironing board. I don't normally pin it but I always pin this here so that when it comes around to the end I know where I have to stop. It hasn't flopped up out of the way. We're going to start sewing right here. So let's move this out of the way and get the table out of the way so Athena can come on in here tip my machine a little bit. Now I've got my machine set up. I do have a FAF sewing machine, so I have a built-in walking foot that is right back here. If you do not have a FAF with um, a built-in walking foot, there's a couple of other machines that have some other big kind of built-in sort of ones too, but you want to have your walking foot on, okay? Because it's got to go through so many layers of fabric. So it's always a good idea anytime you're going to be going through multiple layers, whether or not it's the quilting or if you're repairing denim jeans, that kind of stuff, that's when you want to have your walking foot on. I also have positioned my needle to be a normal quarter inch seam allowance. And I say that because a scant quarter inch seam allowance is what we normally are piecing our quilts with. The scant being a smaller, maybe a, the 32nd or 64th of an inch smaller, which makes total sense for piecing. But when it comes to putting on the binding, having it be even a smidge bigger than a quarter of an inch is what I want because I want my binding to be full. I'm gonna, like I said, not start at the end. I'm gonna start about six inches in and start sewing. I don't pre-pin the binding down. I hold the binding as I'm putting it on and just go about, oh, I don't know, five, six inches, stop and reposition. And then I like to have handy an awl. So let me get my awl here. I like to have handy an awl to help me keep things positioned, all right? Now I'm coming up to the corner 
as I get to the corner, I want to be eyeballing where that quarter inch is so that that's where I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop right there at the quarter of an inch from the edge. When I stop, I then do a back stitch and cut off my thread. Okay. So I've made a very strong little turning spot right there. Now I turn the quilt. So I'm going in the next direction. So I've turned my corner. Now I'm going to fold up my binding. I'm trying to figure out how to do this without getting my fingers in your face. Okay. So this was the binding laid down. We're folding it up so that it's at a 45 degree angle from the corner of the quilt and then we fold down. When you're folding it down, you want, let me see if I can get my all, there it is. You want it, the fold to be just a smidge below the edge of the quilt. Ooh, that works great. There we go. So the distance of the all, actually, that's absolutely perfect. That's where you want that fold to be. And then I do put a pin in there to hold it so when I go to turn nothing will move. Now I'm going to start sewing over here just off the edge of the binding and then continue. I do not do any back stitching when I'm here. Whoops, unless I'm already in back stitch mode. So normally it just goes forward, it's so convenient, and then I continue. So I want to get around this edge of the quilt so that I can show you one more corner and then I'll kind of cheat and just kind of go to the end and show you how I finished that. Okay, and remember when we did the quilting, how we kept the quilting away from the edge of the quilt, that's because the binding is gonna come to here. The quilting is here, the binding is there, you'll have that nice quarter inch distance, so it won't look like you crammed your quilting um, into the binding. This is not the super longest side, but it might take me a little bit. So please be patient. If you were not watching this live, you could forward maybe 30 seconds and you'd be to the next corner, okay? Now this edge of the quilt, this is where I said I accidentally did not leave any, I didn't have the additional backing and batting that I normally would have on. Um, because I just wasn't paying attention when I based it, honestly. Live and learn. It's not like I'm the only one that's ever done that, trust me. So here I do have a little bit more backing, but I don't have any batting to hold on to. But we're coming to our corner. All right. So coming to the corner, and I see that I have one of those scenes very near the corner. I hate it when that happens. And if I was being really fussy, I would take it off. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm come to my corner. Here's my corner. And here is one of those seams that held the binding together, which makes this corner is going to be a little bit bulky. If I were really being fussy and if this was a show quilt, if this was a wall quilt for sure, I would actually take this seam off and I would take my stitching out and I would actually make the, that seam end up over here. It's not very fun when it ends up in the corner, but it is what it is and it'll happen to you too. So this is where I want to stop, right where my all is. Get into position, do the backing stitch, and then cut off my thread. I'm going to turn one more corner and then we're going to cheat and go to the end of our piece. So we're here at the corner. I've turned my quilt. This is the next direction I'm going to sew. Now I fold the binding up so it is at a 45 degree angle from the corner of the quilt coming down and then I fold it straight down toward me lining it up and this edge of the binding, that fold of the binding, needs to be about the distance of your awl from the edge of the quilt. That's important because it makes the 
corner actually be 45 degree angle. If you have this binding slipping up there higher than the edge of the quilt, you will end up with kind of what we call a dog ear on your binding. So just be sure that it's just below that edge. Then like before, I'm gonna start off the edge of the binding and then just come right on. And I'm gonna sew up here maybe six or eight inches and then I'll kind of kind of cheat and go around to the other side. All right, so pretend I did two more corners, okay? And I'm gonna go back around to where we started. Let me scooch my machine back here, this might work. Okay, so this is where we started. This is where I had my pin holding that initial tail and then I started sewing over here about six inches or so from that. So let's say, here we are, Let's say I have sewn my binding down and I'm coming to, I'm sewing, 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 and I come to where I see the beginning part is. Reach over and get my scissors. I wanna now take the tail of my end and cut it off at a diagonal. Again, to eliminate some of that bulk Keep that pin in there. And do you see how this opens up? I'm gonna take that binding, that end of that binding, and just tuck it inside. Use my awl to get everything into position. And then I can continue sewing. So I would just continue my sewing. I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna end up having to take it out when I actually complete it. Continue my sewing all the way across that entire seam. And if I put a pin in there, to represent the stitching, you'll see what it looks like. There, let's pretend that's the stitching. When we flip that over and it goes around to the back, that's it. Now you can hand stitch that when you're hand stitching down your binding. You see where there's my little inset, but I don't. I mean, I might if it's a show quilt, but typically I don't and I've never had there be any problem whatsoever. So what's next? is actually sewing this down. So let's go back to our table. Whoops, those clips. All right, so we're back to our table. Gonna get to that corner. There it is, right there. Right. And it's time to trim it. Now, when I trim it, I'm always going to trim it fatter than the edge of the quilt. All right? So I'm thinking that looks like about an eighth of an inch-ish bigger than the quilt. And then turn the corner. Again, you can see that it's bigger than the quilt. And I'm going to explain why here in a second. Cut that off. Normally, I do like to cut this as one big long strip and save these pieces of batting to put them together. You can use um, the heat press and make, from the scraps of batting, you can make a whole full batting. It's amazing. Now come back to my corner. And here on the corner, I'm going to lift the binding and the quilt, the corner of the quilt, so that all I see is the batting and the backing, and I'm going to cut that off on the diagonal. That is going to make that corner not as bulky, okay? Now I'm gonna test to make sure that this is not too much space. So if I take my binding, pull it around to the back side, I want, you see, this is the line of stitching. Can you see that? All right, this is the line of stitching that's holding the label and the binding in place. When I bring this edge over, I want it to go right past that line of stitching. And if I do that, I will have a full binding. I can feel the batting inside there. And it's almost a little bit, you can see where it's kind of almost curled up a bit. I want my bindings to be full. Um, I'm honestly quite bothered when a binding is empty. When the binding is, if you cut a binding two and a half inches 
and then when you sew it on you sew it with a smaller seam allowance and when you bring the binding fold to the stitching line and at the end of that binding it's empty that's just one of those things and I'm not a picky or particular person when it comes to quilt making. I like my quilts to be nice and precise, but I rarely will take things out and I rarely think, oh, that quilt's not good because of something like that. But an empty binding is one of those things that does drive me crazy. Probably because 25 years ago when I first entered a quilt in my very first quilt show, one of the comments from the judge was that your binding was not full and it took me a long time to figure out what they were talking about nobody had ever taught me that the binding was supposed to be full and it just means that when you're looking here and when you feel that fold right there that there is batting all the way to the end so let me talk just a little bit about this corner when it comes to the corner you're going to fold that Whoops, there's a thread there. All right. And see how this end is coming straight in? That is folded there. Now take that and fold that so that it meets right there, that quarter inch, and then put a pin right there, and then I'll probably put another clip over here. So when you look at the back of the quilt where the label is, the edge of the back of the quilt, these two edges will be covered up by the binding. This diagonal edge will be hand stitched. So just hand stitch it just through the backing of the quilt, not going all the way, you know, stitch into the all the way to the front of the quilt. And I will want to take and hand stitch this binding down with about uh, maybe a smidge bit bigger than an eighth inch stitch and it's really the same stitch that you use for hand applique um, our little video's gone a little longer than i wanted to so i'm not going to hand stitch that down if you refer back to some of the learning to quilt episodes i show you how to hand stitch down the binding or there is a technique you can use to stitch it down by machine. There's also a video. I think that video is probably a year and a half old. But if you search on the YouTube, on our YouTube channel, which is on point dash TV, obviously you're there. Um, you should be, if you search binding, you will be able to find the video where I did the binding by machine. So this quilt will be done. I'll um, get this all stitched down. I'll be able to give it to Nolan. Um, I'm happy to announce that my brother and sister-in-law did, new sister-in-law, did get married last week. But due to the coronavirus, they actually got married on Zoom. So it was my first Zoom wedding, but I was very, very happy that they were able to go continue through with the plans that they made. And we'll just have some sort of big family party later on. So Hope you have liked this little video, working on your labels. We got the whole quilt done. You got your binding done. Now you're ready to give it away to somebody you love. Have a great day.